Hello everyone, this video is going to be about Lutheran Orthodoxy and we're going to follow uh, Philip Melanchthon who was a follower of Luther and carried on his teachings. It was said of the two said Luther himself said that his task was the cutting down of the trees and removal of the great boulders from the field where Melanchthon was the more patient man whose task was to plow and to sow. And Melanchthon also wrote a systematic theology which Luther was adamant against. He did not like the the neat boxes that you would try to put doctrines and teachings into, but, but Melanchthon did write one. He emphasized justification by faith, but also insisted that your good works were the result of salvation, not a means to, an, to obtain or to, to, a means to an end. Um, there was constant conflict between the Philippist and strict Lutheran. So the followers of Philip and Melanchthon were called Philippist, not Melanchthonist, I guess. So uh, there was conflict uh, between the two <clears throat> on the essential and peripheral doctrines. We, we've talked about this before, and so there were things that they saw that were essential to the Christian faith, and he saw there were, there were peripherals, where strict Lutherans said that any compromise of doctrine was a, pretty much a denial of the faith. Melanchthon also saw that there was more of a human will involved in salvation than the strict Lutherans. So strict Lutherans were attend more on predestination where he saw more of a free will involved and but he did align more with calvin though on his view on the presence of communion remember calvin said that it, the presence was real but it was a spiritual reality not a physical all right this next generation of lutherans used the tools of aristotle and his way of arguing and, and building um, thought processes to take the scripture and use the scriptures as building blocks they built these vast theological systems and major doctrines in their own categories they rejected the the use of rationalism that was popular of the day but they would use some of their methods to divide to devise these systematic theologies where we have each of our major doctrines in its own categories and some argue that it's very helpful so that you can make sure that you are like all the teachings on say the doctrine of baptism are together so that you can make sure that your that your doctrines do not contradict each other uh, so that you can really systematic theology is thinking in a non-contradictory way i've heard it explained now but remember luther was against systematic theology he thought that the doctrines of the faith were interconnected and woven together and it was dangerous to separate them into their own little categories uh, at this time, much of the standard theology came from the universities and not the pulpit. Uh, the doctrine of scriptural inspiration, they saw that the, it was the Holy Spirit ordered them exactly what to write, and that only what was written was authoritative and nothing else. And some disagreed on what degree of human personality was involved in the writing of the scripture, because we see that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have different qualities, different slants and things, not contradictions, but you can see the personality of the writer in the writing so they described that the spirit knew the personalities of the writers and it was still okay it was why that they were different and holy spirit still worked through them guiding them along allowing their their uh, personalities because they are created by god anyway to be expressed in that writing and still be authoritative next we'll look at george calixtus and the idea of syncretism and he's going to kind of be the forerunner of modern ecumenical movement of this blending together or this rejoining of of denominations and people of faith uh, he said that saw that just because you weren't a lutheran didn't mean that you were a heretic and a false christian um, he distinguished between the essential doctrines and that those that were related to salvation and those that were not the non-essential doctrines or peripheral were ones that weren't related to necessary salvation the rest were important and true or else god wouldn't have revealed it in the scripture but they weren't necessary for salvation and just because you uh, had differences on these matters didn't mean that you're a heretic uh it was the difference between heresy and error you could be an error and misinterpret the scripture and not be a heretic um the con he developed what was the idea of the consensus of the first five centuries so um those being the core doctrines of of faith that those things that have about the trinity and things that have been fought for and established that the beliefs of the first five centuries as the foundation uh and things after that being more peripheral but the thing is justification by faith was not part of that consensus the idea of 
faith and works was an argument that really Luther brought about. So he saw that that the justification by faith alone was not part of the essentials, uh, where others would argue that it is. Um, uh, he was you know, again. He was seen as the mo modern uh, ecumenical movement uh, person that advances that idea. We're, we still see that idea going on today. So those are the different things that we're still carrying on in the Lutheran orthodoxy, even after Luther.